Yo, what is up guys? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We have a very special episode tonight. Earlier this week, I had an interview with Sophia Chang on Zoom, which was recorded. I'm gonna play that for you tonight. She also has a card that's coming out on Tuesday. It's Roberto Clemente. Make sure and stay up on that. Get a bunch of copies. The interview is awesome. I hope you guys enjoy. This is the second pre-recorded video in a row. I know I just decided to take most of this weekend off and it's been really nice to be honest. And I am excited to get back in the studio tomorrow, Monday morning, I will be back. And tomorrow night, Monday, I will be back doing it live again. So without further ado, here's Sophia Chang. Enjoy and don't forget to stay awesome. Hey, also, I apologize in advance. There is some swearing in this episode. If you're watching with your kids, you might need to put the earmuffs on for this one. But that's what happens when two artists are talking in a spirited debate slash chat. Enjoy. What is up, guys? Blake Jameson here, and I'm very excited because today we have another Tops Project 2020 artist, the only female artist in the whole series, which is amazing, although I think a little dis... It's disproportionate. I think there should be more women in the project, but I'm so happy that you're here. So Sophia Chang is joining us today. Hey, Blake. Hey, Blake fan. Yeah. Hi, thanks for having me. Of course. And all, as you guys can see, so Sophia has an amazing uh, background and she was just teaching me how to do custom backgrounds on Zoom. And I was doing one and I had, I didn't, I don't have a custom one. So I did like a space one, but then the headphones were messing with it. So we decided to scrap that. Anyways, uh, super excited um, to, t to talk to you today, Sophia. I think it's going to be awesome. I think that the fans are going to love it. And um, I mean, I love your art. I would love to uh, talk about that a lot today. Like, I, I think that what you're doing is Yeah, amazing. let's do it. Yeah. We've got all the time, by the way. We're not really in a time crunch anymore. That's great. I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow now, of course. Okay, good, good. Yeah, so let's I, do I this. People on, um, uh, I think it was my last one of the le recent live streams that you are going on a fun family trip. Um, so that's super exciting, but it's great. It got pushed back a day. So now we have uh, some time today to chat. Yeah. We got the rest of the day to chat. So perfect. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Cool. So why don't, um, I guess just for, you know, anyone that might not be familiar with your story and your work, just give, give them a little bit of a background. I know that you do a lot of stuff um, across, you know, many industries, fashion, right. And, and design and, your business is thriving. You're, you're crushing it. So tell Thank them a you. little bit about your backstory and uh, how you ended up here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, my background is really in illustration design. Um, went to Parsons, majored in illustration, wanted to pursue fashion, but then realized everything, everyone was dead inside in that, in that industry. And I was like, oh, I don't think I can make this happen. Um, but uh, honestly, I, I don't think my story is that much special like than anyone else's. I just worked really hard. So I'm originally from Queens, um, Queens, New York. And um I just did a lot of internships during my undergrad years. I collected sneakers when I was growing up, definitely big in the streetwear scene and right. still am started working in it. Um, and yeah, I, I think, I think the time and energy, the 10,000 hours that I put in in my internships really paved way for my career. So I interned with like a fine artist, Ryan McGinnis, just cleaning silk screens, nothing super fancy. <laughs> cleaning silk screens, scanning stuff, you know, yeah. and I interned at Complex Magazine back when it used to be a print magazine. Um, and then, you know, helped out on the digital marketing side. This was all like during the recession as well. So that was really interesting as a, as a, a soon to be college grad. And I also interned with a uh, graphic designer who worked a lot in the streetwear space. So like we, he worked on graphics for like Supreme and I helped him with like undefeated and uh, Stussy stuff. And so kind of just like inside look into these different industries that I was personally a fan of and looking at different ways that I can apply my creative skills and interests. Mm -hmm. um, but long story short, classic story, when you graduate, starving artists counting quarters to take the yeah. subway train to meet, yes. meet, um, yeah. meet uh, clients, ate, ate lots of frozen dumplings, ate a lot of yeah. Kraft mac and cheese. That's kind of what I thrived off of. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and you know, one, one project led to another, make sure you deliver what the client wants, make sure they have a great experience. Um, but long story short, fast forward 10 years, I've had a chance to be able to work with some amazing uh, brands, um, really just kind of hired into the picture a lot of times as a storyteller. 
Mm -hmm. um, to help brands uh, elevate their campaign or product just through illustration and design. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a classic teach a, teach a man or woman how to fish and they'll be able to eat for life. So I really just took a lot of the skills that I acquired and continue to hone in on over the years and just apply it into different projects. So yeah. I started a health and wellness platform seven years ago. That's a print magazine and, you know, kind of like uh, activations to just connect the arts community with the importance of of just self-care and eating well and exercising just because my body was breaking down hunched over a computer before I had to wake up a tablet. So I was doing a lot of vector artwork and literally my hands hurt to this day. Um, and, uh, you know, as a small business owner, learning the whole realm of that, like invoicing, marketing, being the face of it, uh, the operational side of things, um, that I, it's made me very passionate about small business owners overall. So I also just kind of got into teaching in the past five years, teaching online teaching, which then led to workshops and opened up the doors to kind of private clients within sure. social media productivity and um, branding for, for small business owners. So um, that's kind of the whole spiel. Yeah, that's awesome. That's you know what, you know what really stuck out to me, honestly, about all of that is talking about how you're a storyteller. And you help people tell stories or brands and clients tell stories. Yeah. And I think that that like is really evident in your cards. And I love, you know, what you do with the cards where you're still obviously showing the original uh, kind of card image picture in a little bit, but you're really telling the story. And I love all the little Easter eggs and all the little things that, you know, the fun Thank packs. You. Like you must, I, I would imagine you're doing a lot of research on these players to put together and make, make, tell that story, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, this is this, I think I've mentioned this on, on a number of interviews, but I actually, I'm not necessarily like a baseball fan. Mm -hmm. Like I grew, I've, I've gone to my share of baseball games and seen my number of baseball parking lot fights as well. Uh, you know, I rode the seven train almost every day right past uh, Shea Stadium, which I'll, I'll still call it that instead of City Field. Yep. Um, and all of my Queens friends are very upset uh, as to why I haven't made a Mets card yet, just mm -hmm. yet. Well, you got one coming. Works eventually I got one coming yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah but yeah no uh you know it was really important to me I, I was just excited first of all with this opportunity with tops to just create a body of work yep. that was I think working on a thesis is always fun when there's a proper prompt and pay mm -hmm. um but uh yeah like I I just felt like I wanted to make sure I do my due diligence to make sure I'm properly representing each of these players uh I think there's nothing more American than going to a baseball game a lot of times. You know, everyone takes their hats off. We sing the national anthem. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like each card is also a representation of American history. And right. so I wanted to make sure I'm communicating that to capture. And with every card, like you said, you kind of already guessed it. Um, I do a bit of research to make sure I'm capturing any nicknames, any terms that might be associated. If you're sure. a fan of the player or the team, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you'll, it speaks to that audience down to yeah. just anyone who's a general art collector as well. Yeah. 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 So, and as far as those art collectors, do you think that um, with you being in this project out, outside of the baseball collecting hobby, but obviously with a ton of uh, fans and, and patrons for your art, are those collectors, uh, are they supporting it? Are they, are they getting into the baseball card? game and if so yeah, for sure if so do you think they're getting farther in or are they just collecting your cards or do you think if some of them are uh i don't know like for me like i had a lot of art collectors that kind of like me used to collect baseball cards gave it up forever it, not forever but for uh, decades and because of this project we've gotten back into it and so like i've had collectors say oh i got your card and then all of a sudden i was digging through the garage and i found my old cards and now I'm like on eBay, like buying other random, you know, they're like back into the baseball card collecting game. So is that, are you seeing any of that with your uh, art collectors that maybe were baseball card collectors or had been at one point? Oh yeah, for sure. I think like people who follow my work, because I, I do create a lot of like merchandise product based stuff with my art that people, you know, regularly purchase. I'm definitely seeing um, kind of the fuse of all these worlds, which I'm really excited about. Uh, it's for me to come from more of like a street art uh, illustration background to be a part of this campaign and just see the lineup of the 20 artists they have. I mean, one thing I always mention is like, God, I can't imagine the one guy or just the meetings that they've had within Tops and the presentations that they have to show to be like, this is going to be our new project, Project 2020. Here are these artists 
in terms of mainstream, like, especially, especially in the baseball scene, like people probably don't know who I am, or maybe some people follow your work, yeah. but it's really cool to see these worlds come together from yep. street art to, you know, um, baseball card collectors to streetwear as a whole, mm -hmm. um, and just seeing what everyone's creating, because guess what? We clearly know that this, this project is doing really well. This Killing is going to open up opportunities for you and myself for, for future projects Absolutely. within the sports world. Absolutely. Um, and also create opportunities for all the other street artists that weren't a part of this um, campaign. So I think yeah. it's only upwards from here. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I think that like, like art and baseball cards or art and any cards like has been, those have gone together for a long time, but it's always been like yeah. a lot of like, you know, oil photorealistic depicting a photograph. And it, it almost yeah. like the art looks like a photograph. And there's, I have mad respect for people that can do that. I cannot do that to save my life. But um, I think that what Tops did a really good job is like, they really did pick like a really kind of diverse set of artists all working in different mediums and also with all very different audiences. Um, but also with audiences that, you know, definitely if they could bring back into the baseball hobby could, could still like expand and stay in that hobby. And it's just been so much fun. Um, it's been a really fun process. And like you said, like all the opportunities that are going to come through it, come from it, it's like hard to even imagine because three months ago before the, before the first card launched, I had no idea that in three months, like this would, this project would be as big of a deal as it is right now. And like, you know, yeah, yeah. And I no one saw this coming. This. I don't no, think anyone saw this coming. The I baseball know. card collectors are like, we didn't see this coming. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's awesome. You know, I feel like obviously some more notable street artists like your cause working in mainstream more Tristan Eaton working on artwork for this past Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, and now down to this project, like it's, yeah. it's, it's going to be a really exciting outcome in a few years once we get sports back. Yeah. Well, maybe not. I, we don't I really can't. need sports. To, to I know. Well, happen. well, I think like, <laughs> You know, the fact that sports aren't happening has more people sitting on their couch looking for some type of outlet that might be sports related. So I think that like, as much as it sucks, everything that's going on, not ideal, but all those things considered, I actually think that it could have helped Project 2020 um, be what it is today because it's like people need an escape and, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of things to be uh, anxious about or scared about. But like the one thing that people can depend on is Monday through Friday, there's going to be some new art at one o'clock and right. there's a chance it's going to be their favorite player, you know, or their favorite artist, uh, you know, or a new artist that they're just discovering, which is awesome. No, I'm just yeah, for sure. Like even I even um, I even kind of started like I wouldn't say collecting, but I definitely started buying other people's cards just because I yeah. thought the illustration was so dope. Oh, yeah. I one of the first ones I bought was I was. I was looking at, um, I think, Ermsey's Ichiro. Mm -hmm. I was like, fuck it. This is so dope. I'm going to buy one so for myself. Cool. And it's affordable. It's a yeah. very affordable price yeah. point. As long as yeah. you're buying off of tops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually yeah. had to buy my, one of my Marianos on off eBay. of eBay for that's, like a very hurts. embarrassing amount of money. <laughs> that hurts. That hurts. I, know. I, I like being a part of it. Like, no, of I'm course. Like, oh, yeah, of I'm, course. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm chipping in. Well, you know what's funny to me is that in the card community, paying $20 for one baseball, just a base baseball card is actually a lot of money. And there's a lot of people in the card community that are like, well, I would love this project if it was $10 a card. But what, and, and some people are like, oh, they missed the opportunity there. But I was, I've been talking to some people recently that specifically are looking at it from an investment standpoint. And I'm like, don't think about it necessarily as a baseball card. Think about it as a tiny painting because I've never sold a print for $20 ever in my whole career. And, right. uh, you know, and all, you know, I have had, you know, fans and friends and family and stuff over the course of my entire life, even before I was an artist that, that enjoy what I'm doing and like to support and watch me, but they couldn't necessarily afford to buy a painting. And now like this project gives them literally like a $20 in to like get, get a cool piece of art, which has been like, which has been a really, really fun um, part of the whole thing for me. So, yeah. Yeah. So tell us about what is your next drop and Tell us when it drops, but just tell us the date because whenever, I don't know when we'll play it. We'll just say, yeah, it drops on whatever. Cause I, and also with the teasers, I didn't really know whether with tops, like how much we can say, we can say who it is and when, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. You could, uh, honestly, we're killing it for tops and tops loves what we're I doing. I know. Right. I know. And, and I um, love tops. 
you know, <laughs> you, so definitely as soon as you get the assets from tops and they give it, you know, the front and the back and the flip, you know, yeah, yeah. then it's open season. You can share everything. But even Got up it. until then, like I've been doing, definitely telling people the player names, like people know the next couple players I'm painting. Um, as soon as I know the release date, I'll say, oh, my next card comes out on this date. So they know who it is right. and when it comes out. And then I'll, I've started teasing out just like little tiny strips of it. So like, Dope. but like of my Mike Trout that's actually out currently, we, we did like these little squares and this guy on Twitter literally like made a collage and he like took like the original card and then put my pieces over the right. top of it where like he almost completed the entire card and he put that out. Yeah. It's crazy. It's People crazy. straight up do their homework. It's it's like it's a uh, it's like a whole new world for me, and I'm like, damn, people yeah. are just watching every move. Um, yeah. But to answer your question, my next card is going to be Roberto Clemente, awesome. and it's coming out on Tuesday, which will be super fun. And then following that is going to be Ricky Henderson. Nice, that's. Great. And then after that is going to yeah. be a really big player, which I'm really excited about. Uh, but I haven't gotten the date for it yet. That's yeah. great. That's amazing. But that's the fun part because, um, you know, you get only get like through, like as artists, you only get like yeah, four or five players, yeah. yep. which is super dope. Cause it's like, you know, you see it, you're working on yeah. it. Um, and then you, for me, I just finished that batch. So now I'm just like, who's next? And they get told me the one next pit player. They didn't tell mm. me like when, Yeah. but it's fun. I like it. I like the, the surprise element of everything. The suspense. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Cause uh, obviously there's a couple really heavy hitters in this set where all of the PRs are higher, all the pe people are promoting it a lot more. And so like at first I was a little bit, uh, disappointed is not the right word. I was just like, oh, I don't know. All right. I don't have any of the stars in my first five cards. Um, but now my sixth card, Mike Trout, which is definitely one of the stars came Hell out. Yeah, I saw that th this morning. Oh, thank you. I looked at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, I was bummed at first and then now I'm like really excited because like this project has just been like taking off that now I'm like, yeah. man, I can't wait to like whoever gets the paint trout last is actually probably going to like break out all the, all the records. It's going to be just t absolutely insane. So it's been a fun, uh, fun adventure for sure. As far as other artists in the project, were there any that either um, you knew or like were familiar with their work before the project? Cause like this turned me on to a lot of new artists that, are amazing at what they do and, and super successful, but still like I live in a bubble and I didn't, I wasn't familiar with a lot of their work until this project. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Um, when we first got the, like the 20 lineup, I quickly like kind of Googled everyone's name. Cause, and I, like you said, mentioned earlier, like it was so dope the way they curated it because everyone has such a different style and a different background. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just, really exciting and still is to see how everyone kind of translates every card and it's cool to see other people do the same card that you've done because mm -hmm. you're just like oh cool like I, I didn't think about that mm -hmm. um but I I'm familiar with Kimu's work grotesque I've uh -huh. been following his work for quite some time and um you know earlier on oh, in my life in he's LA? from New York he's in Portland now but he okay. um has been in New York for quite a few years uh and he's a phenomenal graphic designer and illustrator um and you know i used to buy his books and cut out the pages and frame them because That's i can't cool. afford the real thing yeah. i do that with with steve powers as well with nice. expo um but yeah uh his work josh Vetus, and then ben yep. baller mm -hmm. obviously familiar with their stuff and then there's one guy i don't remember his name but he did all the branding for me keller beer me keller brewing oh keith shore yes yeah his stuff yeah. is awesome yeah. so it was super dope because i'm i was first introduced to his work via like just the whole beer project that he worked on and um yeah it's it's exciting and i think you know i might find a new uh artist style to fall in love with depending on how the drops go totally totally that's awesome yeah i had known just uh I'd followed Gregory Siff for a long time and I had done a group show with King Saladin and really liked his work uh, at the oh. end of last year. But um, besides that, like it was a lot of, a lot of new, uh, opened my eyes to a lot of new talent, which is really, which is so cool. And now, you know, like this, like sitting down with yeah. you, uh, I'm talking to Tyson Beck later today. I've had Gregory Siff on the, um, on the stream. I've had F dot. Eric is amazing. Eric is actually, he's local. He's in Brooklyn. And we're, once things settle down, we're going to try and do an in-studio collab 
uh, like live stream where we're both painting at the same time, which would be super fun. So it's cool. just been a, it's been a really cool experience. What do you think, um, what player that you have coming up are you most excited to paint? Hmm. I know you're not, I, know, I know you said you, you gave us the preference of you're not necessarily a, a longtime baseball fan, but I'm just curious, like, right. you know. Well, I mean, the, my first answer will definitely have to be like one of the, the Mets one players. The, I think yeah. it's like yeah. <laughs> Dwight Jeter, Gooden. Kirby, but, um, oh, Doc Gooden. Yeah. Nice. Like, all of, I mean, obviously yeah. the, the more popular ones like, uh, Derek Jeter and Mike Trout are always going to be cool because it's gonna be amazing. See, or Nolan Ryan you'll see how people yeah. um, respond to it yeah, but for me for me I think again because I don't I'm still doing the research on all of the the players and it's a it's a new culture like mm -hmm. cultural space for me mm -hmm. um, I'm approaching it more like artistically so funny enough you know, you get, uh, we got all the, the card assets beforehand, yeah. before we even yeah. like started working on the illustrations. Yep. And so the first PSD file I opened up was Mariano Rivera. Yep. And I'm literally looking at this card like, fuck, what the hell am I going to do? Because this dude, first of all, he's in these very loose slacks that yep. clearly are not his yeah. size. He's just, um, no, he just posted no in the hallway chilling. <laughs> Yeah, he's in like a hallway slash underneath underneath yeah. somewhere in the stadium. Yeah. yeah. And there's no jersey. And yeah. you know, like obviously I've seen baseball cards in the past. It's, it's kind of an action or he's yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I was like, how the fuck am I gonna like bring this to well, life? What you did with it and was amazing. So thank we'll you. so since we have the way that we're recording this, I'm actually gonna put all the art on this side. So when we're talking about stuff, I'll just it'll go like ding. So we'll show the cool. card here. So if the, imagine if the card was up here right now. It's like on the Conan up. show. It's great. Yeah, awesome. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little more low tech, but yeah. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, yeah uh, so I had the idea of doing the Yankees, Yankees jersey um, after doing, obviously doing a bit of research on him. Mm -hmm. And of course, because my friends that are familiar with Bills, they're like, dude, did you not know who this dude was? And I was like, I don't know. I've actually never yeah. been to Yankee Stadium. Oh, um, but whatever. Well, I'll yeah, make yeah, it there yeah. one day. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, I, I actually asked Tops, would it be okay if I put him in the Yankees uh, jersey? Because I know there's some rights, uh, IP stuff when it comes to the actual logos. And um, he his, it's also a rookie card. So he's not actually playing for the Yankees at that point in time. Mm. And so I wanted to run that by them. They were cool with it. And I don't know if you know this, but I actually put the glove on the wrong hand. Mm -hmm. And of I, course, I didn't, the internet I didn't know it. I didn't notice or see. It. I, I heard that, but I didn't notice or see it. Uh, I, yeah. I noticed it, but yeah. So when we first, so when Tops sent me the assets, right, I started promoting it on my social and some people started calling it out and I was like, fuck. And in yeah. my head, I'm like, damn it, I don't follow baseball. Shouldn't the Tops people be the people who are doing like quality control here? Like how yeah. do they not mention it to me? So I talked to them about it and they were like, well, you know, sometimes misprints are, are even more special, but I'm like, mm, I think this is a little bit more than a misprint. This is a full on, like might be somewhat offensive <laughs> to the baseball fan community. Mm -hmm. So we decided to just switch it and switch it to the proper hand and then launch it. Uh, yeah. as is so that was yeah. a fun hiccup which i'm hoping yeah. to just avoid here on forward yeah yeah it's all good i had um i had a last minute change on my mark mcguire card i had done a little bit of um taking creative liberties with his jersey as well and i changed the number okay. to uh the number mark mcguire was when he played on team usa which was 41 mm. versus the 87 tops that we were uh you know he's 25 so like they were actually fine with it at first. And then it was last minute too. They're like, yeah, actually we gotta, we gotta make the right number. So like I'm doing everything literally like analog, all analog. It's all big, pretty big physical paintings. And so like I had to go in like the day before because we had already had like a bunch of media set up for the launch. So like we couldn't push the launch. And so I like had to go in and basically repaint the whole Jersey, uh, you know, 12 hours before the launch or something, which is just Damn. ridiculous. So I've had, I've had the same experience. I didn't, I didn't get the, to the point where I didn't get called out by anyone, but I think that I actually think people would have loved the first one that I had tops was just worried from, um, uh, I'm sure, you know, from protecting themselves standpoint, which makes sense. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So what are you, uh, what are you planning on doing with all your paintings? Traveling art show. 
Awesome. I want to do so, uh, like I would. So obviously we, we have to talk to tops and get their permission, but I've been in contact, you know, with Jeff quite a bit. It sounds like he's, um, oh, oh. Well, okay, great. You upgraded us did, in the middle did you get of that little pop-up. Yeah. yeah. I what sure did, did. We're oh. upgraded. Oh, wow. Thank First you. First class now. Oh yeah. Fancy. <laughs> fancy. Um, yeah. So it sounds like they're going to be open to stuff like that. And so, um, I would love to do a, a sh traveling show where I can go and show the full complete set of 20, 20 paintings. And I, it would be awesome if it was a group show where as many artists as could possibly come, you know, it'd be great to right. have everyone. I mean, yeah. one of the ideas I had um, just throughout the guys early on was like, why don't you guys make like a gigantic hardcover coffee table book, but it's designed mm. like, you know, like the binders that baseball card collectors Ooh, have. Yes. That's it's designed brilliant. like that. So yeah. It's printed like that, but yeah. it's actually all of our cards and then like all 20 of them. Mm -hmm. And then you turn and it's like a bio oh. on the artist and stuff yep. like that. Yep. And a little interview. And they were just yeah. like, oh yeah, cool. I don't know. There's Maybe they'll do it. Thing. They should. They yeah. should. Yeah. Yeah. So there's code card binders hold nine cards per page, which makes it a little tricky with the 20. So you could do like nine in the front, flip it. You have nine more. So that's 18. And then you have like, but you the know bio, what? And don't forget. Little, little, we get to make our own cards I so know. that'll fill True. in 21. the front yeah it'll fill it in and we can always put like another filler regarding to the artist to sandwich the entire True. Collection. Yeah. True. So. yeah so it's uh it's good i think there's there's a lot of cool stuff i think that tops could do with the with the art beyond you know just the project 2020 cards and we'll see what we'll see what that ends up being but pretty exciting to be a part of yeah all right well let's see um so how, uh, and it, we don't have to end the episode uh, at all, but I just want to, I actually should have done this sooner, but like, where are you pushing your art and where should people like be following you if they want to keep up? Like different artists are doing like FDOT has a Patreon where people can do uh, pay five bucks a month and then they get to see his process videos of making his cards. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. Other, everyone's doing different things. I do a live stream every night, as you know. But um, is there stuff, is there anything that you're doing or like ways that people can like keep up with your work or see the progress on the cards? I know you're about to go on this trip, so disregard the next couple of weeks, but beyond <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Like, is, there a good, is there a good spot for that? Honestly, like I, I mean, like authenticity and gen like genuinity is like always like the number one thing for me when it comes to, hey, everyone else is doing this, you should do this too, of and I get that. And it's, it's very, it's the whole baseball card culture is very new for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of just taking very small steps. Mm -hmm. um, and just to figure that out, obviously I have like a ton of the content. I'm going to be creating a bit of content um, moving forward to just show a little bit of like process stuff. Right. Um, majority of the, I just set up my web store. Okay. And I'm just kind of stepping into this space. Obviously, I've had a ton of people reach out to me looking for signatures and stuff like that. And I just figured it all out last week. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And, and I think like last, like a week or two ago, I just launched Willie Mays. So it's been a couple cards in and I was just, I was just trying to wrap, wrap, like wrap my head around it so that it's stuck true to my brand and how I right. usually work with my fans um, because I know like someone like yourself, you're already familiar with baseball cards. You're already familiar with the scene. So you know how to kind of move a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And so I just set up my web shop. I'm going to be rolling all of that out. Mm -hmm. So my next card is coming out, um, Tuesday, June 9th for okay. Roberto Clemente. Then we're going to be rolling out the signatures, mm -hmm. um, on my site. And then following that, I'm actually going to be launching all of my first, like, top five first five cards nice we're going to be rolling out signatures for those nice um so monday will be rivera that's the uh -huh. tw 15th yeah and then it's going to be rivera jackie robinson bob gibson yeah. uh ichiro willie mays and yeah. all of that and so so at first my strategy was like fuck i didn't buy any of my own i didn't buy that many of my own cards so i'm right. like on ebay yeah trying to get these cards and keep getting fucking sniped and shit because i don't use ebay yep. and then i was like i'm just gonna buy it now fuck this shit and i was just mm -hmm. super frustrated so i bought like one of the first three because mm -hmm. i only had two for myself because in mm -hmm. the beginning i was like oh this is so cute i'll just buy a couple for myself mm -hmm. um and so how I kind of structured the, the signatures is that people can 
purchase the signature and they'll send me their card. That's great. And so uh, earlier on in the year before COVID and all of that, I was in conversations with the MLB as well about potentially working on some like limited baseball hand-drawn stuff with them. Right. And so I wanted to kind of include that in as, as uh, for some of the higher tier signature purchases and stuff like that. But it's, it's fun. I'm going to make my own cool. little like sticker, yeah. little certificate of authenticity. Yeah. So yeah, that's I'm excited works. to roll it out. It'll be super we're dope. Doing right. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I'm, I'm, um, so like, what, like I, so said, I don't I'm think like, you mentioned it yet and maybe it's not live, but it could, maybe it will be by the time, but w w the web mm -hmm. store, what is the, what's the URL? So it's my website and you just click shop or it's just SMI.com slash shop shop okay. or dash one. I think okay. I have to fix the URL a little bit, but yeah, okay. that's it. Okay. Well, we'll put it in, we'll get it sorted. And once it's sorted, we'll put it in the description down below of this video. So people, yeah. And in it. addition, if yep. people want to get into the whole discord stuff, I just joined this, this week. Nice. So we're kind of communicating with fans within I'm communicating with fans within that. And like, um, any types of like drops and stuff like that will kind of be announced through there. So that's cool. the easiest way to talk to people versus like DMs and emails yeah. and that Yeah, because DMs across all the different platforms, it's so hard to keep track of. <laughs> exactly. My email inbox is out of control. I mean, yeah. all the inboxes are out of control. Discord is a yeah. good idea. Um, I've joined a couple other people's Discord groups. Oh, I had oh, random. That was uh, on there the whole time. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> just, just life of an artist in a messy studio like so. <laughs> anyways um yeah i've joined other people's discords uh and like tops project 2020 kind of specific ones and i've been chatting yeah. there but then again it's like the same thing like my it just gets so flooded and and i can't keep up and the thread goes and goes and i'm just like i feel lost so i gotta figure out a good solution and uh i'm eager to see how discord works for you um and hear about that because I don't know. Got to figure something out <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it's been cool. I mean, like people aren't like overly active. They're definitely like, can you give us a password beforehand and stuff like yeah. that. Um, I mean, I, I try to make it as even of a playing field as much as possible. And the cool thing too is um, obviously with like eBay and Shopify, there's a lot of bots. The way I set up my site, it's like because of how I have everything hosted, we're not going to have that issue, hopefully. So yeah. it'll be it'll be first come first serve and see how that goes. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'll try and be there. <laughs> yeah. I, I, would love, right. I would love to get one. I'm going to try to get your card today too. Make Good. that investment. Have, yeah. have some Blake paintings. Yeah, totally. Um, I think I have all of yours so far. I'm trying, I'm trying to collect all of them. I missed some early ones because I just didn't know. I didn't know how cool the project was going to be. So my right. first card was uh, eight, number 18. It was my Nolan Ryan. And basically pretty much everything wow. after that I got but I missed a lot of the early ones. And as you know, on eBay, those are the, those are pretty crazy to try and get later. Right. So I've been filling in the gaps as I can. And, um, it's been a, it's been a fun journey. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been so great. I really appreciate, uh, spending time. I hope you have so much fun on your road trip adventure. And, Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, I really appreciate it. I hope this is the first of many times that we chat, whether it's here or, you know, we could do something on Instagram, I think would be really fun uh or whatever you want so let me know anytime yeah, count me in okay yeah dope all right well i'm going to close this the same way i close everyone actually do you want to just tell everyone your like your twitter your instagram and anything else before and then i'll tell them i'll do the sign off yeah it's pretty much the same thing it's just sdmi uh and people might be asking what that is it's just e-s-y-m-a-i okay it's i am backwards and my initials sc Okay. And early on in like high school, when like everyone used to tag, they would yeah. get, go to the post, post yeah. um, USPS and like get the yeah. little stickers. Yep. So I used to draw that and just stick that everywhere in That's Queens. Cool. I love that. And, I was uh, curious. I was actually curious about the history of that. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's terrible for branding because it fucks up my SEO a little bit, but it's fine. But yeah, so just go to my website um, and also on Twitter and Instagram, it's the same uh, same thing. E S Y M A I. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sophia, for joining us today. Everyone else stay awesome. Man, how cool was that? I'm sorry for all the kids watching. Uh, I've been trying to limit, I've been trying to monitor my language a little bit. Obviously Sophia and I were just having a conversation between artists and we said some bad words. So I'm sorry, kids, but, uh, 
we will kind of get back to uh, more PG-13 rated soon. Anyways, right now, I'm going to show you guys world premiere. You saw it here first. Sophia Chang's next card, Roberto Clemente. Here is the teaser for it. Make sure to pick it up on Tops.com on Tuesday. And keep an eye out for her autographs, which are going to be dropping very soon on her website. That was linked in the video before. It's also linked down below in the video description. So enjoy this, Roberto Clemente. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Stay awesome.